What's up, y'all? It's Mike in the building. Uh, glad to be back for another video. Uh, I'm going to cover a new deck that I've been playing a lot with. It's been a lot of fun. But uh, I need to point out a couple things first. Um, it is a snow day today here in good old Vineland, New Jersey. I think a lot of the East Coast, um, or at least like the Northeast, got hit um, with a, a blizzard. It's still, I think currently it's still snowing. Uh, I tried to shovel a little bit of my driveway just to kind of see how worth it it is. Like, I, I want to just get it done, but I think I have to wait, which is really annoying. So in the meantime, I'm going to do uh, some, I'm going to play some games on uh, MTG Arena. I recently switched from Alchemy to playing Standard again, uh, and, and I've kind of been enjoying it. Um, another thing I'd like to point out is, because it's a snow day, I'm just going to not really care about my appearance. I look like an old man. I haven't showered yet today. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I apologize for that, or I, I'm not going to apologize for that. And because it's a snow day, I have a fancy drink that I just created. Pretty good. Uh, it is white rum, mango bubbly, just like, like sparkling water, and um, Grove Stand orange juice, which just has tons of pulp in it. I, I don't mind pulp, but this has a lot of pulp in it. So it's kind of crazy. It might get stuck in my mustache. I hope that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, it's a snow day. I'm just going to, heck it, you know, have one of those breakfast uh, cocktails. And because uh, I already had a little too much coffee, I think. So let's get to the Golgari deck. Uh, I played against a deck that used a couple of these cards in one of the last videos that I posted. Um, I think it was Undead Butler I had seen for the first time. Uh, and I thought it was kind of cool. I was like a little nervous uh, to have it die in combat because I didn't know what, you know, what was going to happen. It's not as good as I thought it was in that game. I was a little more afraid of it than I should have been. But I still think it's pretty good. I mean, milling three at two with a, a you know, a body. And, and it has uh, two toughness, which isn't, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, so there's a lot of, like, cheap creatures that actually, you know, get the milling engine started. So I always really liked this card. Um, it can it can be a big problem for your opponent. Sometimes it just kind of does nothing, and I think I need to uh, work in more creatures. Really, is is my big problem because this will mill a lot of the times, and just nothing happens for a while, um, which is a bummer. But when it gets going, especially if it gets going early enough, it's definitely pretty good. So it's a one one for one green uh, creature fungus at the beginning of your upkeep mill card. Then if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, transform Death Bonnet Sprout, and then it transforms to a three three. With uh, a trigger at your upkeep, you may exile a card from a graveyard. If it if it's a creature card, it gets a plus one plus one counter. So it can get kind of out of control. Um, it's nice coupled with removing your uh, opponent's creatures early, because then you obviously are removing their blockers, and then you can exile them so they can't do any graveyard shenanigans, and then this becomes a bigger and bigger problem for them. So we've got uh, Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal there, and it's you know versatile. A little later on, you can pay more and hit a creature or a planeswalker with no uh, mana restriction. Um, that's with the kicker ability. So let's see, I guess maybe we'll go over the mill cards first. We wanna ditch things into our graveyard, that's that's why the death bonnet sprouts there, it's nice and early. Um, and we wanna try and do this with creatures. We wanna, we wanna have as many creatures as possible, which I think is my problem right now. I think I could incorporate more, I think. Uh, so we have Undead Butler, uh, it's a 1-2 zombie for 1 and a black, when it enters it mills 3 cards, and when it dies you may exile it, and when you do you return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's milling and recursion on one card. Um, old Stick Fingers, <laughs> some of these names are ridiculous. Uh, it's a Star Star for X, Black, Green, uh, Creature Horror, Legendary Creature Horror, that's why I'm running 3 of these. Um, and when you cast it, you reveal from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards. Put all creature cards revealed this way into your graveyard, then put the rest on the bottom in, in a random order. Uh, and his power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. So sometimes on turn two, you can't play this, because if you do, it'll just die, I, th I believe. I don't think I've ever done it, because it's, it seems like that's what would happen. Which I guess in some circumstances might not be bad if you just want to put more stuff in the, the graveyard, but... Um, usually you want to try and mill something with it, uh, because it, it's going to reveal until you hit a creature. Uh, or you want something where you, you already know that there's going to be a creature in the graveyard. This could become a big threat uh, later in the game, just be huge out of nowhere, and you just pay two for it, which is kind of nice. Um, and then early, I feel like I've had four, four um, old stick fingers on turn three, which is nice. Um, so I'm running three there, and as you go up the curve, you'll notice that the creatures, uh, I'm running less of each, because it starts to become more of a toolboxy um, feel. So, you know, our one drop we have four of. 
we want to get that in our opening hand almost every game. Uh, and then into, into Undead Butler um, is probably the next best thing. Null Priest is fine, but this is a little better late game because you really want to kind of take advantage of the, um, the kicker uh, and, and return something from the graveyard, and it goes right to the battlefield. Um, it's also not, the, the lifelink on this is nice. I think it's the only thing that gives us, that gains us life, and sometimes that's crucial. Sometimes I'll, I'll re, um, you know, kind of uh, reanimate that just to stay in the game. Um, if we're if we're down against an aggro deck or something, so that's nice. You can you can get ahead with life early in the game. It's kind of annoying to block because it has menace, but then late game, it it does both of those things, but also can retrieve something else. Um, old Rutstein is a one four with one, uh, for one black green a legendary creature, human peasant. I'm running three of these. Um, when it enters. The battlefield or at the beginning of your upkeep you mill a card if, the, if it's a land you get a you get a treasure if it's a creature you get a one one insect token if it's a non-creature non-land card you create a blood token so it's always kind of giving you small value um i, I like this card it's got a big butt so it, it's a nice blocker um eccentric farmer also mills for us when it enters you mill three cards which is clutch and then you may return a land card so that's kind of nice in those weird opening hands where it looks good you could play a death bonnet sprout and, you know, you, this can help you kind of guarantee your, your turn four play uh, if you have Nyssa, the, the cube, or Binding the Old Gods. It's just nice to uh, have a little mana fixing, and, and it mills three cards, and it's a pretty decent blocker. I think it's a pretty good common card. I mean, I'm only running two, so, like, it's not that strong, but it, it's clutch every once in a while. All right, anything else mill? Um, the only other thing that technically mills is the Burning Rune Demon, which is, I feel like it's an all-star in this deck, honestly. Because this introduces two threats, basically, to your to your opponent. Because by the time you're playing this, there's probably some way you can recur something from the graveyard. So anything they ditch there is, is almost so, pseudo going in your hand, plus the card that they're putting in your hand. So you're basically drawing two cards, sort of, pretty much. Um, and it's a 6-6 flyer by itself, so let me read it real quick. 6-6 for 4 black black, it's a creature demon berserker with flying. Um, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for exactly two cards not named Burning Rune Demon. That's just so you can't chain these together, I, I guess. Uh, they have different names, so you can't choose two of the same card that aren't this card. If you do, reveal those cards, an opponent chooses one of them, and then they put... The, the chosen card goes in your hand, the other one goes in the, in the graveyard, and you shuffle your, your library. So it's a big threat that comes out, and even if it gets removed right away, it has to enter for them to remove it. I mean, I guess the uh, like a counter is probably the best way to deal with this. Um, but uh, even if it enters and then they kill it, you still get a decent amount of value from this. Usually, I'll use that to in introduce this card into the game. Um, it depends on on. Um, I guess I'll talk about that in a second. Just want to point out that that mills um, one card. So let's see. Uh, I guess let's talk about removal. Blood Chief's Thirst, cheap uh, removal, becomes a little versatile later in the game. Uh, we've got Binding the Old Gods. I didn't realize I was running four, but that's pretty clutch. It's versatile. Um, it helps us ramp, and uh, it gives us a little edge in combat every once in a while with the Death Touch uh, on Chapter 3. It's not that relevant, but um, I, I kind of like it. Um, gelatinous cube is, is pretty clutch. Uh, it, it exiles. The only thing is sometimes, uh, it's, you play it and then they remove it and then they just get their thing back. So, so I, I'm careful with this card. I try to play it when I know I can either pay the thing right away, the dissolve cost, or, um, or maybe the next turn, like not give them too much time or do it on something dumb, like something really small. So like if they're going to waste mana removing this just to get their small creature back, like, I don't know. It's like, whatever. Um, I don't think I've ever come across um, the non-ooze issue with this, so that's kind of nice. It's pretty versatile. Uh, well, it hits creatures, I guess, just creatures. Still still like it. It's because it's a swing. You get a 4-3 body, which is pretty good, and then you remove something off the, their side of the table. That's pretty good. Um, Blood on the Snow. I'm just running one copy. I, honestly, I don't remember the last time I even drew this card. <laughs> Uh, bu bu bu. so that's all the removal, I believe. And then let's talk about recursion. So one of these, I forget why I cut these. I was having a lot of issues. I think maybe I just didn't want as many tap lands. Because I was running more. I can't remember. 
that might just be all it was. We, we want to get this out turn one, ideally. So I'm just running one of these. Uh, it's nice in the end of the, like, you know, end game, uh, late game where you need to get uh, a threat back from the graveyard. Uh, same deal with Agadine's Awakening. Um, it's a really powerful card uh, late game when you have tons of mana and your graveyard's full and it's just, it's backbreaking for your opponent. Um, Nissa is also recursion and it's actually a pretty decent threat. The 3-3 three, three, uh, menace creatures are, are kind of annoying for your opponent to deal with and sometimes you might just like force them to either take three or like block with something that they kind of don't really feel like blocking with just to get the double block to, to kill it. I mean, it does remove your land, but we're ramping a little bit with Binding the Old Gods, so... Um, you can also play around a lot with, you could play this and then play a land, uh, with the landfall, uh, ability Nissa would get an extra loyalty, brings it up to five and then you can remove her from the game to, uh, well, minus five for her to, to recur something and, and it comes back larger. So and there's cool play patterns with that. This pulp is annoying. Okay. Uh, Drana, uh, recurs things also on attacks triggers. Um, so I'll get this like later in the game, just running two of these when, uh, I want to be more aggressive. Uh, so that kind of comes back to what I wanted to mention about the rune demon. If I'm trying to be aggressive, I'll either go for the caretaker, which put just like boosts, it has hexproof and it puts two counters on another target creature, uh, at the beginning of combat. And then Drana starts getting that your opponent has to choose a creature from your graveyard each combat when you're attacking. So... These are really like more aggressive, like late game cards. Um, if if it's late game and I have the Burning Rune Demon and I can kind of search things up and I, I'm behind, I'll search for like a Binding of the Old Gods in a cube just to get removal. So it's 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 a really cool card and it and it's just a big blocking body when you're kind of behind. Um, so that that's it's a lot of fun the the toolboxy strategy and the uh, higher end of the mana cost. And then Diagraph Rebirth is, is a pretty good card, too. It, it's a uh, sorcery, uh, three black green. It, this spell costs one less for each creature that died this turn, which isn't super relevant a lot of the time in my deck, but it happens occasionally where it'll be one cheaper. Excuse me. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, which is nice, and then has flashback so you can do it again later for an additional two colorless. I think that's it. We've got the snow-covered lands, I think, literally just for Blood on the Snow. Um, which I could probably cut, or I could add another one. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess if I wanted to lean more into creatures, I would remove it. I don't know what I would add in yet. Uh, but, I mean, this plays pretty well. We'll, we'll, we'll jump in. Um, other than that, yeah, it's Snowlands, three tap Snowlands, and then everything else is Basics. Um, try to keep things nice and simple with my mana bases these days. All right. Let's get it going. I think I'm at plat one. So if I win a couple games here on the video, um, I'll be up to a diamond, I think. This drink is way better than I thought it was going to be. I was trying to do like a... Oh, God. I can't remember what champagne and orange juice is called. Mimosa? Mmm. Excuse me. So we don't have the uh, the little mushroom character for our, our turn one, which I really like to see, usually. Uh, I'm going to mow. Oof. All right, I'm going to ditch the five drop. Hopefully we can stay, keep things stable until turn three. So no turn one play from our opponent. That's good. This is going to be a life gain deck. This is going to be ugly. Okay. All right. This isn't too, too bad. That would have been nicer on turn one. Hopefully we can mill some creatures, because, like I said, a lot of time it just mills non-creatures, and that, that might be an issue I have to really, uh, really seriously address. Maybe I'll do it in this video. I've been thinking about it for a while, but... Ugh. Okay, we've milled a creature. Let's get old Rutstein out. Uh, mill. Okay, no land. We've got a treasure, so we got a little more mana next turn. No attacks. We have to remove something. So I'm thinking maybe the cube hits the voice of the blessed. 
at least just to reset it. So we block here. Hopefully they don't have anything. Okay. See, yeah, old Ruts, Rutstein is a, is a nice blocker sometimes. Land milled. There's a creature, so we got two creatures. We've got five total mana. It doesn't really do two, oh, six total. It doesn't do anything for us this turn, but let's get this removed. Uh, I think that's a bigger threat. And then we've got no no good attacks. If we can get like binding the old gods or something, we might be in decent shape. <laughs> or blood on the snow. They're down to one card in hand, but they've got a lot of uh, juicy things on the battlefield. So let's do this. Just want to try and slow them down. That could have been a big mistake, I don't know. Alright, we've got our Death Bond and Sprout transforming, so we got a little more power, but... We didn't do that much. Alright, we can... Alright, so let's do this. This is kind of the play pattern I was talking about earlier. Play Nissa. Her landfall triggers when... Obviously when a land comes in, it gives her a loyalty. So minus five, because we're not going to be able to protect it super well. And then let's... Oh, we can't get the big guy, I forgot about that. Hmm, let's get this again. Alright, so this is triggering their life gain. Let's get rid of this. Hmm. I'm gonna hold on to that, I think. Yeah. We got a little chump blocker. We we've got we got some space. Some wiggle room. Because next turn we can play the Nissa and then uh, play Agadim's Awakening to do the same play pattern and try and get something else. We could even block with Gelatinous Cube and do the same thing. That's really bad. I forget what this does. Uh, three white, four legendary artifact. At the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a three, three white angel creature token with flying, pay three, tap it, exile it. Put an enlightened encounter on target angel. It gains you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. Okay. Now how many angels do they have? No angels. Okay. And this doesn't gain them life. Nothing gains them life. Good. No attacks. I like that. So maybe we get rid of that. Um. Oh yeah. Let's exile that baby. Okay. Now, can we do the same play pattern and get rid of this? I think we can. I hope we can. I should do that after, because that's not as important. Let's see what this looks like. I think I think we're good. Mana. Um. Then play this. We'll just do a tap. Should be on the safe side. Do I start, start jamming in with the... They're just going to take it. Tell the king I take responsibility. Oh, yeah. Oh, did I click the right one? Okay. Alright, so this is a situation where I still feel like I'm not stabilized. So I'm going to hit... Uh, mm. Yeah, I want to I wanna remove stuff, I think. Because I've got some threats out there now. I could, I could, uh, we'll see, that could be bad. Maybe I should have played the Hexproof thing. Or, uh, tutored the Hexproof thing. And, like, Drana. But I, I want to get rid of these Voice of the Blessed. I've lost too many games to them where I've just let them go. Luckily, they don't have any, uh, life triggers. So I was clutch grabbing that thing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of that right now. Oh, or I could gelatinous cube. No, let me let me do this to be on the safe side. So that's value two. We'll, we'll just exile that. Yeah. So long. Now. Let's see. Let's see what they do. 
All right, I like them sub 20. Hopefully they, they didn't get anything that procs uh, life gain. Okay, that doesn't do anything yet. Nice. I did not feel good about that matchup, but I mean, it, it kind of shows you the, the versatility that the deck has. And we're done. Sweet. I think I'd probably be higher with this deck, honestly, but um, when I was playing with it after I first built it, I was, <laughs> for like a couple weeks I was playing in... Um, is it just called unranked? And just just standard unranked. And I was like, wow, I'm kicking everybody's ass. And like, I kept I kept like go, when I would go into the next game, I'd be like, oh, like damn, what was my rank? I gotta be doing pretty good. And I didn't remember because it never showed me because I wasn't in standard ranked. <laughs> um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about uh, alchemy and, and the changes recently. I, I saw that they kind of nerfed the uh, the two drop dragon that I was complaining a lot about. It's, it definitely makes it more fair, because it gives you more time to deal with it, uh, but um, I still don't like it. I still, I still think I prefer standard. I think that's my official um, opinion now. Um, it, it did help that, uh, <laughs> that I saw Dev return and, and play standard instead of Alchemy. I'm pretty sure, but I have a feeling... See, CGB returned, too, and I don't know what he did. I feel like he would play Alchemy. Ugh. Excuse me. But I don't know for sure. That would be interesting, because then it kind of splits up the community a little bit. Because I feel like a lot of the people that watch either of them might watch the other one. Maybe. Got to turn one Death Bonnet Sprout. And the World Tree on the other side, so probably a multicolor deck. Or is it guaranteed a five color? Not necessarily, I guess. But probably probably multiple colors. So let's just jam. Play a swamp. And then our second sprout. Start uh ditching stuff. So no creatures in the bin yet, just Blood Chief's Thirst. I haven't seen a World Tree deck in a while. Is, is it is it a dragon deck? Um, land Nissa, that's not great. But currently under no pressure. Replication. Field of Ruin. Den of the Bugbear. <laughs> what is this? I think they're trying to do big flashy stuff. Hmm. We could be more aggressive, though. I think let's be aggressive until they play a big flashy thing and then we destroy it. I must Maybe? The blight that dwells within. Binding of the Old Gods would have been nice because it would have guaranteed a, a land drop next turn, though. Still no creatures in the bin. See, this is what I'm talking about. I gotta, I gotta make a, a, a change, and I can do it subtly. I mean, the the deck doesn't suffer that much. It's just if things went correctly, that turn we would have hit them for nine instead of five. So, I could I could do it slowly. Like, I don't really want to ditch binding the old gods. Okay. I think I'm gonna binding the old gods the replication ring. All right, at least we got a land drop. I'm I'm gonna play that instead of holding on to it. I I wanna make sure that we're not missing land drops here. Five cards in hand for our opponent. We don't need that. We're jamming two. Get him down to ten. That's not bad. Hopefully they don't have a big flashy play, but if, if they do, I hope it's a creature with no ETB. That is a non-ooze, by the way. <clears throat> okay. If we could transform these now, that would be superb, but we still don't even have one creature. That's that's bad. This that makes me look bad. 
poor deck building. At least we transformed one last game. At least it transformed and it happened. And I think I got the exile creature or something. I think I got the exile one. Foretell. With the only colors we've seen are green and red, but they have a replication ring, which I think can represent any color. Let's let's verify that. Yeah, so that really could be anything over there. Hmm. Well, we can play the rune demon. Let's jam in first. I can't. Really All right, we'll we'll get to some of our, our th threats of our own. Let's get. Uh, do we get threats? Yeah. Let's do Drana. No, I'd rather. I'm gonna let them choose. Do they want me to have removal or do they want me to have. Where's my X proof lady? Oh, what? What? Is it in the bin? Oh. When did that happen? Okay. I kind of like that because it, it put power on there immediately. Uh. Sure. No. Let's be aggressive. So we can either play Dr Drana or we can recur the uh, X-Proof lady. I forget what her name is. <laughs> Call her expert lady. Hmm. If the board state stays the same though, and they don't play blocker, we just win with our board next turn. And the sprouts might even transform. I forget what they're choosing between. Uh, one's a creature, one's a non-creature, and we've got one creature in the bin. So no, they they could transform. It's possible, but. Okay, that's good. It's fine. We can still use the Diagraph. Rebirth. I don't think we're going to need to. I think they're stuck on land. Okay. Let's just uh, play the Demon again. <laughs> Heck it, you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, I want one of these to be on the safe side. And... Sure. I don't know what our bin looks like right now. It's probably not very good, actually. That might be a dumb choice. We have a one drop, six drop. That's it. <laughs> uh, Agadim's Awakening was a bad call. They're going to give us that card for sure. Uh, excuse me. If they're constantly able to uh, handle our threats, then this, this game could be an issue because we, we could run out of steam. Ideally, they play a creature with no ETB. We cube it and then jam in. All right, I think I want to mill stuff. No, I want Drana out there for sure. And then we'll play this for X is 1 just to get a cr another creature. In the, uh... All right, and then we've got Binding the Old Gods as uh, backup removal. Although this seems very controlly. We might not see a lot of uh, creatures. We might lose this game. I think, I think we might be in a bad spot now I'm looking at it. I mean, we have a, a decent amount of, like, good draws, like, good threats, but if they can just handle them more efficiently, then... Like, we might have to play the cube without a target. Okay. If something sticks here, like, if one of these two... Okay, that's good. Because we're going to get value off of Drana. We should. And then I'm going to play an old stick fingers, because clearly they're afraid of it. I guess it just represents more damage at this um, point in the game, but Drana's going to keep getting his value. 
Do I make this huge? Yeah, you know, we got nothing else to do. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna make this six. So we're gonna put six creatures in the bin. So now did we did we bin all of our Agadine's Awakenings? Ay ay ay. Let's kick this. Can we get the demon back again? Hmm. This has hexproof. This is better, I think. Maybe. Maybe it's better. I mean, they have wipes. Alright. I was getting a little nervous there. I thought they were getting an edge. They just... I, I don't know what, how they were going to close out the game. It's an odd deck. World Tree Control. Or just like um, board wipe tribal. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Might be doing a couple, a couple finance videos. I don't know. I'm gonna do a, uh, at least uh, I think a net worth video for February, which will be brutal. It's gonna be bad. I think I probably lost like five grand in the last month. Maybe maybe like three grand in the stock market and probably with uh, crypto in there too it's gonna be ugly but um i i think it might be a good opportunity to express one of the ideas that i had in the net worth video about how um you know you can use it to track your progress but it's also gonna swing with markets if you're invested so we'll see i mean clearly the markets have tanked in the past like it was the worst january on record i believe so we'll see how much of an impact that has. I have a feeling it'll have a pretty significant impact. Like, to the to the extent that my net worth probably didn't budge. Or, or is negative. It's probably negative. This has two toughness against Shambling Gas, and we can get our strategy rolling. Two creatures, that's nice. Because then we have less time for the Sprout to be sticking around until it flips. I wanted to play the Null Priest, but they have a Sack Alley, it just gets picked off. They can't do the same thing with the Butler. I lost to this deck earlier. Same start. I don't know if it was the same person, but... I think I'm having a better start than that game, though. I think I'm going to pay the three life. This gets our strategy going, and, and I can profitably block Shambling Gas. I will not run out the Sprout, though. It's just going to get picked off if they jam in, and I block. Dude! Okay, alright. Let's go play another one, I think. Uh, or. I say, heck it. And, oh, I should have played the tap land. Right? Yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. I need some life gain if, if I can. Let the uh, Null Priest stick around. At least I introduced two threats. They'd have to lose both Shambling Gas to get rid of them. We're down to two cards. Three cards. Okay, so no blocks. And now at least we can start gaining some of that life back with the, with the Null Priest. Cool, that survived. And then we will... Let's see. I'm not going to block here. I can't block with anything. We have to try and race them.
That's this will help us race. We're still not gonna block. Hopefully they don't have any removal, and then we can just uh, start jamming in heavy. What do we have? Creature? We have. We definitely have creatures in the bin because that's Ralph flipped. Okay. So they're not gonna jam with everything. Yeah, they're gonna hold back. Yeah, sure. Okay. Interesting. Now, if the eye twitch dies, I don't know what they get, but I don't know how much I care about that. Alright, on attacks, I mean, they're, look, they're going to get value off the eye twitch, which kind of feels bad, but uh, I shouldn't have played that. I knew there was a reason I was avoiding that. They're just going to choose that off the Drana, but we'll get another ETB off of it. Hmm. Yeah, we don't want to attack with anything else. We don't want to give them the uh, opportunity to shamla gas something. It's such a crazy card for being a one-drop common. It, di it dictates so much of what happens in combat if you have low toughness creatures. Which now, though, I feel like we've pivoted to be con in control of the game. All they're going to pick off is the Null Pre- Oh, wow, that was dumb. And we can exile it. Right now. <laughs> I'm going to do that right now. Cool. They should have uh, chosen Old Rotsy. That was a big mistake. Not, not big, but... Alright, so they're gonna get like an exile spell? They're, they gotta get removal, right? Yeah. Okay, what do they hit? Drana? I hope they exile the ghast. Okay. Now we don't have another one. Treasure. Let's exile this. This is just causing problems for me. So it doesn't matter anymore, but yeah, maybe we'll start going in a little heavier. I might ditch blood on the snow unless they play something that we really need it for. I'll probably wait till their end step to do that. Just because we got nothing else going. Uh, maybe I should do it earlier since we only got a one drop. Oh, I hope they pick off the uh, undead butler instead of the help <clears throat> Good. As long as you keep that lifelink around, I don't. I don't care. And yeah, we'll take that action. Bring back the hexproof guy. Yeah. Okay. You you let me do that. <laughs> Should have been the uh, all priest of oblivion. Okay. And there they've got the uh, board in the box, but we already have a board, so. I think it's bigger than theirs. They just have the 2 1 flyer, but. Uh, they have another. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay. I'm just gonna jam, you know? Have fun. Yeah, I mean, there are 15. Still, still a little bit of a game, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. How many creatures do we have in here? Because this is this is where I can really uh, start bolstering our graveyard. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the hex roof. I don't care about the three two. I don't even know. They might both die. I don't know. I think they are. It's not looking good for them. I'll keep the treasure open. Uh, nah, let's 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 hit it. Let's get four creatures in the bin. If I draw a recursion spell, I want I want some nice targets. Cool. 
Cool. We beat Mono Black. I lost to them earlier, but they had a much better start in the first game. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it there. Um, let me know if what, what you think about going back to standard uh, and the, uh, the Golgari deck. Uh, what, what changes I should make, because I think I should introduce more creatures uh, and, and replace non-creatures for the Sprout. Just have uh, more explosive starts and more targets later in the game for recursion, but it, it's hard to balance sometimes. I mean, it still it still works. I mean, it still went 3-0 and um, in Diamond f fairly easily. So, uh, yeah, and then keep an eye out for some finance videos and, and music stuff, as always. So, until next time.